Hi everyone and welcome to the latest edition of the Bison Video Blog. It's hard to believe in mid-February we could fill a half hour. But we won't do that to everybody, although we sure could this week with what's been going on uh, in the latest happenings of the FCS world, along with Jeff Kolpak. I'm Dom Izzo. I don't know where to start. Well, it's uh, 55 below out. Let's yes. have a half-hour special. Let's <laughs> we, do it. We can certainly do it, although I'm not sure Ryan would appreciate that who produces <laughs> our uh, show here today. Well, we'll start with what happened over the weekend, and that's, of course, the big news that Montana State will not be coming to Fargo, Jeff. Uh, this coming September, the Bobcats have decided to buy out the game with NDSU, which now creates a firestorm because NDSU just finished its schedule, we thought, on Friday with the addition of Delaware State. And now there's this gaping hole that the Bobcats are not coming. And in my estimation, that was the highlight game of the 2013 regular season schedule. Well, especially for a home game. As no we're doubt. watching here, uh, this game out in Bozeman in the playoff two years ago, yeah. I think everybody is looking forward to the return game here no in the doubt. Dome. And it's unfortunate for the Bison fans, and I think it's unfortunate for the Montana State fans, because I'm sure there are a few that were going to make the road trip. Yep. It's a neighboring state. It's uh, about a, what, eight, nine-hour drive. It's not that bad. You can do it in a day. And, and, and they're two alike schools. You know, when NDSU made this transition, Dom, to Division I, one of the schools they pointed to is, hey, look at Montana State is a Division I school. NDSU should be like Montana State. Yeah. And here was a chance to have a game in Fargo. Now, this is the second time that this game has been bought out. Uh, NDSU went there in 2005. They were supposed to come back uh, in 06. They moved that to 07. Then it was bought out. They tried to reschedule it. Uh, the contract was signed in 2009 to come and play the game in 2013. Now, if we go back to 2009, $100,000 was the buyout. That seemed like a lot of money. But in retrospect, here we are four years later, 100 k and even in the FCS world, Jeff, is just, it's chunk change to some schools now. It really is. Well, it seems still like a lot of money to me to for me. an FCS game because, <laughs> uh, you know, NDSU is looking at now bringing in another school. If I'm, I want to be the agent for these schools coming in because I'm starting at 350, aren't you? You have to. You have to. I would say, considering uh, Delaware State just got 200000 and you mentioned this to me on Saturday night, that you hit it right on the head, that whoever now NDSU wants to get for this date, they have all the bargaining power in the world. They can ask for whatever they want because NDSU has to get a six home game. I, I, Gene Taylor will not go, I can't believe, would play five home games and six road games this upcoming season. I don't see that happening under any circumstance. Well, they just need a game to start with because right. 10 games right now where some teams are that playing 12 yeah. <laughs> will not work no. very well. It's, uh, it's going to be interesting uh, who is available and who can come. I'd yeah. like to see Southern Utah yeah. uh, make the trip. Or I'd like to see Northern Colorado. At least they're from. two recognizable names. Yep. You have the list of available teams, <laughs> and it's not a lot out there. No, I mean, we're talking, and you mentioned the two top schools, I think, out of the Big Sky that are still have, I think, September 7th open. But after that, we're talking about the Pioneer League, which now I know has the automatic bid starting this season, but that's non-scholarship football. You have Northeast schools, which the Bison have went down that road before with a Wagner and a and uh, Central Connecticut State and Robert Morris. Patriot League schools are still open. Uh, the SWAC and the MEAC obviously are always looking for uh, for games to play, but it, that that's just another tune-up game. And granted, NDSU's done that. Remember a couple years ago, they had Lafayette and St. Francis, and they won the national championship in 2011 with those two non-conference games. Well, at least they're still Northern Iowa coming to the <laughs> Dome, so I guess we have uh, that to look forward to. You and I still but there. But as, uh, as, a, as a hype game, yep. I guess you want to call it, uh, that is not the win. And the problem I have, too, with this all and I know the Montana State AD has been making the rounds today, yes. is that uh, it's the timing of it. You know, no if this doubt. happens in last sub summer or something, not a big deal. Yep. NDSU has time to figure it out. But the timing of it being six months before the start of the season, uh, it just makes for a, a, a very sour NDSU athletic director. And I guess I can't blame him because no. now he's got to, not only do you lose your opponent, now you're going to have to pay for it. Georgia Southern, for the record, bought out, in October of 2010 for a game they were playing in September of 2011. Also, for next season, the buyout for Montana, Jeff, is $200,000. That's a start of a home-and-home -home with the Grizz come here and then the Bison go to Missoula in 2015. I don't see under any circumstance where Montana doesn't come because I think they want that game. Granted, I know they get 20000 at every game in Missoula, but uh, I think they want that rematch uh, there in 2015. I don't see a problem with Montana not coming here. Uh, the old administration where Montana didn't come to South Dakota State after South Dakota State yep. went there twice. Cal Poly, they bought out Cal Poly. Mm -hmm. NDSU was supposed to be a return game. 
that administration, the president, AD, all gone, that's yeah. all gone, yeah. the head coach. So uh, I don't think this administration, I haven't seen any evidence, yeah. put it that way. Now, if we thought that might not be the biggest scheduling news of the week, obviously then we were preempted last Wednesday when Barry Alvarez went on uh, his monthly radio show in Madison and proclaimed that the Big Ten is done playing the FCS, which obviously that sends shockwaves not only in Fargo, but in Cedar Falls, Vermilion, uh, anywhere you want to go in the Missouri Valley, because this is huge. This made national headlines, Jeff, how, how this comment was blown up. And obviously it's not been shared by not only guys in the Big Ten, but also the other BCS leagues. Yeah, I think he was maybe speaking out of turn mm. for himself. Uh, it has been discussed in the Big Ten, that we know. Yep. They did discuss it, but everything was discussed when they added Maryland and Rutgers. Correct. Everything within the On Big the Ten table. scheduling yep. um, uh, situation was discussed, and that included playing FCS schools. Alvarez comes out, and, and to me, the problem I have with this, he's, he's speaking for the whole Big Ten, Correct. and I don't think the whole Big Ten is answering with that. I don't think schools like Purdue, Northwestern, Illinois, uh, I don't Indiana, think the, Indiana, yeah. especially Indiana. Minnesota. <laughs> they need FCS games. They need that 95% success yeah. rate, the victories to be uh, bowl eligible. Now, on the flip side of this, I would say we don't know a couple years down the line if the bowl situation changes with the new playoff is what I'm getting at. Do, if they change the structure that maybe you don't need six wins to be bowl eligible, whatever happens, that maybe that's why they don't play it. Well, but if you don't have six wins, you shouldn't be bowl eligible. I agree with you. But I guess on the playing devil's advocate, where one school or one conference sees this, and we saw this in realignment, where one buddy, once when somebody goes, everybody else follows. If the Big Ten decides to go and do this, the FCS has got to be worried that the SEC, the Pac-12, and the Big 12 wouldn't be far behind and say, you know what, we're not going to do it either. I, I don't think so. I don't. I don't see that happening. Nope. I, I, you know, the SEC has got into a scheduling arrangement with, uh, the, with the Southern SoCon. Conference. Yep. Yeah, and I think that's worked out well for. All involved. I, I think they've been pretty competitive games. Yeah. Georgia Southern uh, threw about 300 yards on Alabama <laughs> two years ago in a national championship year yeah. for Alabama. So I, I don't see where uh, some of these schools will follow the Big Ten on this part. Obviously, this hits NDSU square between the eyes because they have a game at Iowa in 2016. Northern Iowa routinely does this. There's a, I believe if I did the, we did the blog last week, five or six Missouri Valley schools have future conference games with the Big Ten. Also, if this comes down... Is the Big Ten going to shell out the money like we were just talking about, buying out all these games? I mean, granted, the Big Ten network is driving this. They're getting a, a, reportedly $35 million per school once this new TV deal comes in when the playoff in 2014. That's a lot of money. So out of $35 million, I guess, $100,000, 200000 to buy somebody else. Right, it's else. nothing. Maybe they'll do it in February. How about that? <laughs> but it's disappointing to see those games off the schedule. And we talked about it on the radio show last night. As... I'll take my reporter hat off just as a, an observer of college football. Those games are so much fun to go and watch and to cover. Montana State is in that in that ballpark as well. That Minnesota game, the Colorado uh, State game, the Kansas game before that, those are the highlight games, at least uh, as a reporter, that I like to go and cover. If you're a Gover fan, what do you want to see? Do you want to see New Mexico State or North Dakota State? Honestly, what would yeah. be a more compelling game? Uh, the NDSU games by a landslide, just because of the amount of fans that have come to Minneapolis. Ask the bar owners of Minneapolis who yeah. they'd rather see. <laughs> I think 10 out of 10 times, I think we know the answer I think they want to see them every year. Absolutely. Uh, also, we get some national attention coming up for the Bison men's basketball team on Friday night, Jeff, as they're on ESPN2 in the Bracket Buster game with the University of Akron. The Zips come into this game with the longest winning streak in the nation. It's 17 in a row. Uh, they're 21-4. and four. They're in tops of the MAC right now. With Taylor Braun, this was going to be a tough game without him. It's it's a really hard game for NDSU. It's going to be it? a hard game because of this guy right here, Zeke Marshall, <laughs> seven foot center. Yeah. NDSU has uh, Marshall Bjorklund at six eight, although he's a strong six eight, about two thirty or so. But Zeke Marshall is going to be a player that mm. NDSU hasn't seen this year, no. and that's going to be priority one. Can they contain him? Can they attack the basket with him there? That was a problem with Western Illinois. I thought they gave Terrell Parks. Uh, I thought NDSU shooters had alligator arms when they got in the lane mm. because Terrell Parks is uh, known for his block shot, shot blocking ability. Yep. And it was obviously uh, NDSU was thinking about him when they entered the lane. Same thing here on Friday night. Well, Zeke Marshall, uh, you know, dominate a game yep. even though he's just sitting there. Taylor Braun, they're expecting back, not for the bracket buster game. Saul Phillips told both you and I after the game with IUPUI on Saturday night for Utah Valley. They're currently 5-4 and four 
uh, without Taylor Braun. Obviously, a couple of those losses to Western Illinois, one to South Dakota State, the other one uh, to Oakland. Would, what would I have told you? What would you think of that record back on January 12th, that they'd be 5-4 and four through the Would not be round? surprised because I, I think uh, when you go on the road without Taylor Braun, I mm -hmm. think that's where it's most noticeable. He's your senior leader. He's been around, or he's junior. He's seen, he seems like a senior. He's been there for a while. Right? But he is your one of your leaders on the court. He's been around. And uh, I think that's, uh, I'm not surprised. I think the first game we actually saw the impact of him not being there was Western Illinois. There were possessions where NDSU either needed a stop or to get a basket, and his presence not being there was obviously firmly felt in that game, in my mind. And he's added that three-point shot to his arsenal this year, too, and has been pretty effective with it. NDSU hit two jump shots all game against Western. How big of a factor is it now that it looks like unless there's some crazy things that happened in the last uh, two weeks of the season, then NDSU will not win the Summit League Championship and probably not be the two. They're looking either at the three, and Oakland is coming on like a bear right now. They're at the four spot right now. Well, it's going to take a major choke job, I think, by the top two teams <laughs> for yes. uh, NDSU to grab that spot. When you look at it, though, not playing on that Saturday, they won't have the bye. Is that a big deal or not a big deal? Well, n n no team that's played Sunday, Monday, Tuesday – uh, has come through in quite some time, mm. and I think that's been uh, several years. I think Valparaiso was the last team wow. to do it. Good nerd well, stat. Yeah, good nerd stat. <laughs> uh, so either the number one or number two seed, which it's plays on Saturday and Correct. gets Sunday off, yep. has won that tournament. Western Illinois did it last year. They went. They played all three games, but they lost in the championship final to South Dakota State. Uh, it should be interesting to see how that all pans out over the next two weeks is that we have left to go in the season. I'm not quite sure what we can do to top this next week. Unless somebody else buys out a game or NDSU yeah. schedules Alabama, which one guy tweeted Stuff's at Stuff's happening daily around I know. here. It's great. I did appreciate that. I got one tweet. There is one team open that I didn't have on my cool. list on September the 7th, Alabama. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> bring, bring Nick Saban up, I'm sure. Right? Be, yeah. The Bison could host Alabama, apparently, on September the 7th. There you have it, folks. The latest edition, edition excuse me, of the Bison <laughs> video blog.